Hello students and thank you for attending this virtual college fair. If you want to ask questions to a presenter, you can just click the Q&A button and send it right along. Your camera and microphone are off, so panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many sessions going on, so please check out our schedule at StriveScan. And the sessions will also, are also being recorded and will be available at StriveScan in about a week or so. Um, so at this time, I'm going to pass it off to the presenters. And first up, we have Virginia Commonwealth. All right, so my name is uh, Robert Avison. I'm an admissions counselor here at Virginia Commonwealth University, and I'm just going to share my screen real quickly. Okay, so a little bit about VCU. Need to go back here. Um, uh, we have, uh, we were founded, well, our technical founding date is 1958, but our Confusing logo uh, it says 1838 and that's because of the Medical College of Virginia that is their founding date, but General Assembly of Richmond merged our university. Um, the Medical College of Virginia to the Richmond Professional Institute in 1958 uh, so if you kind of think of VCU, we are a large university with two main campuses the Medical College of Virginia, um, or MCV, it's the second largest hospital in Virginia. That's where a lot of our pre-health professional students are going to be studying. And then the Richmond Professional Institute, um, well, actually the Monroe Park campus, that is the name of the other campus. That's where pretty much every undergraduate student is going to be studying. Only exceptions to that are those in the nursing, um, clinical lab studies, um, pre or dental hygiene and then radiation sciences. They might be on the um, Medical College of Virginia. But in terms of VCU itself, we are right in the heart of the city of Richmond. It's an awesome place to live. It's a very central location, about two hours away from everything. Um, we're very outdoor friendly with over 550 acres of James River Park system. Um, and we also have eight Fortune 500 companies headquartered in Richmond and 11 Fortune 1000 companies with over 150 community partnerships. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to get involved, not only at VCU, but in the surrounding city, because again, we're a very large urban environment. And then in terms of what that cap campus population looks like, uh, there is going to be a little bit over 30,000 students and a little over uh, 24,000 undergraduate. Um, in terms of class size, however, we have an average classroom size of about 27 students per classroom. We also have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So a lot of undergraduate faculty are going to really be helping our students um, with, again, research opportunities um, and finding their niche here at VCU. Um, and then in terms of what we look for, a couple of important things. Uh, we are going to be test optional this year uh, due to COVID. However, if you do choose to send in your test score, middle 50% range of what we're looking for is around a 1080 to 1270. Um, ACT about a 22 to 27. And then the GPA, kind of the range we usually see is around a 3.3 to 4.0. Um, keep in mind with all of those numbers, we are holistic. So what that basically means is uh, we're going to look at everything, uh, not just the GPA. And if you're a little bit under those numbers, I would still encourage you to apply. Looking at GPA trends, letters of recommendation, SAT, ACT score, obviously, if you do turn those in. But again, we're score optional if you don't. And then a couple of important deadlines, the two main ones to look out for. Uh, I would encourage you to apply by November 1st. We are through the common application. Uh, if you do that, you're automatically considered for one of our merit-based scholarships, the Presidential Dean, or Provost and Dean Scholarship. But if you apply by January 15th, uh, you will have a decision by or before April 1st. That does not mean uh, if you're applying earlier that, that you have to wait until April 1st, um, but that's gonna be just kind of the absolute latest that you'll hear a decision back. Uh, action, but after January 15th, and we'll still review your application. And um, yeah, in terms of that, I went very quick. Another thing I do want to mention actually, um, 
uh, for financial aid, our financial aid priority deadline. That is going to be March 1st. The FAFSA application opens up on October 1st. I'm sure you're going to hear this a ton or you have already heard this a ton, but go ahead and apply for financial aid. Um, that is something that uh, is very important. But that is uh, just kind of a little bit about VCU. Um, again, very large right in the city. We like to say we are a campus with no boundaries, but we definitely hope to see you guys here. And if you do have any questions, feel free to always contact our office or email either, either via email or phone number. But yeah, I think I covered everything in that quick second segment. Thank you so much, Robert. And up next, we have University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Sorry, I'm having issues bringing up my presentation right now, but um, I am from the University of North Carolina, Wilmington, here we are. And I am one of our admissions counselors here at our university. And I am also a double alum, so I'm a Seahawk through and through. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about UNC Wilmington. So we are located in Wilmington, North Carolina, and that is right on the southeastern coast of our beautiful state of North Carolina. So we're a beautiful beach town community. Wrightsville Beach is the nearest beach to our campus location, so it's just a 15 minute drive. As well within Wilmington, we have the historic riverfront area that has over 800 different businesses, great shopping, restaurants, and nighttime life for our students to enjoy off campus. So it's a beautiful town, southern town to be a part of and while you have your college experience. We are considered about mid-size, just a little under 18,000 total students. An undergraduate breakdown of that is about 14,650. We do have um, 56 different majors that you can pursue at the institution, as well as 36 ma uh, master's degrees and four doctoral degree programs. And reference to our location on the map here, you can see we're about two hours from our Raleigh uh, State Capitol and about a little under four hours from the Richmond area. These are an overview of some of our majors that we offer at the institution. Like I mentioned, we have 56. At UNCW, you don't declare your major until you're a sophomore. So when you're applying for admission, it is solely general and you'll declare at the end of your freshman year. So we have our College of Health and Human Sciences, Watson College of Education, our College of Arts and Sciences, our Cameron School of Business, and then we have a separate private research facility, our Center for Marine Science. So we are known as North Carolina's Coastal University, offering marine biology all the way up to the PhD level, just due to our campus location. And then I always like to provide a couple photos to provide insight of some of our classroom spaces, our general scenery here at UNCW. We are open for campus tours as of this week, so if you would like to come down for a visit, you can create a C-level account to do so. At UNCW, the student focus is our driving mission every day. So that's within teaching, research, and service. All of our students get to be engaged in applied learning that can be research and discovery, study abroad, which we have over a thousand programs in over 50 different countries, securing an internship or a practicum in which most of our majors actually require that you have a practicum or, inter or internship in order to graduate. If not, you can always touch base with one of our career center specialists to get you secured with that out of classroom experience. Even due to our 18,000 total students, we do have more of a private school feel within the academic classroom with the student to faculty ratio 18 to one and an average class size of 27. Two points of pride that we always like to highlight is that 75% of our graduates will work full time post graduation within a six month time period. And then additionally, 14% will go into a full time graduate level program. So this just shows that we're bringing our students onto campus, giving them the support that's needed, providing them with the skills that are needed after graduating for them to secure that employment or further their education through a master's degree program. 
A little bit about our campus life here at UNCW. We have over 250 clubs and organizations on our campus. So ranging from Greek life, religious affiliated groups, club sports, anything that you can imagine we may have. Um, with our sports athletics here at UNCW, we are part of the NCAA, NCAA Division I athletics program. We are part of the Colonial Athletics Association. And like I mentioned, we have over 20 club sports as well as intramural sports that are available here at UNCW. In regards to our admissions criteria, what we review for students, we will look at your academic profile. So that will include your rigor. So are you taking honors, AP courses? We'll look at your weighted GPA as well as your class rank. You can see our middle 50% from last year admitted students fell between a 3.9 to a 4.4 weighted GPA. However, for out-of-state students, this is tailored a little bit lower to a 3.5 weighted GPA. As most institutions due to COVID, we are going test optional this year, so it's not required for you to submit either an SAT or an ACT to be considered, but we do still require a written essay through the common application, a short answer, which is just always why UNCW, so we want to know why you would like to become a Seahawk. We will look at extracurricular activities, so your involvement, whether it be clubs at the high school level, a part-time job, internships, anything that you're spending time outside of the academic classroom participating in. And the last optional component is a letter of recommendation. We do have two concrete deadlines. November 1st is our early action, and it is non-binding. And then our second deadline is regular decision due February 1st. As mentioned, we have our application on the Common Application as well as College Foundation in North Carolina. And then one highlight I would like to mention, we did um, host our first virtual open house last week. So that webpage is solely live available. So if you wanna learn more about our institution, um, you can hear interviews from our students, hear directly from our faculty and staff regarding academic major. And as mentioned, my name is Tanisha Young and I am the admissions counselor for the Mid-Atlantic area. So I would be your direct contact if you have any further questions or concerns. You can leave them in the Q&A chat or also just shoot me an email. Thank you so much. Awesome, thanks. And up next, we have Abrit. Hi, um, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Cameron Mitchell and I work for Abert University. Um, I am a traditional admissions counselor. Um, I'm a fairly new counselor um, as of this March. So uh, this is actually my first go round. So um, I'm super thrilled to be here. So thank you. Um, so I am going to share my screen and go through. Perfect. So um, as you can see, um, welcome to Averitt. So um, Averitt University was founded um, in 1859 um, as an all-girls institution. And then um, later on, it actually became co-ed in 1959. And then Averitt University in 2001. So um, yeah, so we've been Averitt University since 2001. And as of today, we are sitting at kind of a 50-50 ratio between male and female. Um, however, we did start out female. Um, at Averitt, we do have a total of five different campuses in Danville, Virginia. Uh, Danville, Virginia is right on the border of North Carolina um, on the southwestern part of uh, Virginia. Our campuses, um, we do have five different campuses, which, which is our main campus, um, which is where all of our traditional undergrad students live. We also have our Riverview campus, which is located downtown in the Riverview district. Di Riverview district. We have our airport, which is our flight center. We have our main, our north campus, which is where our uh, grant center, which was actually just renamed at, as of yesterday um, as the uh, Stewart Grant Center, which is uh, where our uh, football stadium is located, and then we have our equestrian center. So um, we do have five different campuses, um, and then mixed, I guess, in between all of those, we do have a total of 965 tr traditional undergrad students. Um, we do have a slightly small international population, but here at Avert, it does make a big difference. Um, and within your class sizes, you know, you're definitely going to experience that because they're going to be pretty small. So where is Danville? Um, Danville is located right on the border of North Carolina. Um, our Riverview campus is actually where 
we house our, our nursing department. And within, uh, within that is actually a local nonprofit. And uh, it's located in the heart of the Riverview District downtown. And within there, uh, they are upcoming and uh, revitalize it, re, bring, revitalize, revitalizing um, the downtown area. And uh, a lot of our alumni do tend to move into apartments down there and uh, work after they graduate. So it's super, super nifty. So our student life at Averett. Um, we do have a student engagement team. Um, we have over 30 clubs and organizations, um, intramural sports. Um, I myself was not an athlete, so I was involved in intramural sports. Um, I'm an alumni from Averett as well. Um, we are super big in the community. A lot of volunteer work, uh, the Center for Community Engagement and Career Competitiveness, or CCECC, uh, is super involved in getting students um, acclimated with the community and volunteering and uh, definitely setting up their network skills. Listed here, we have um, 27 majors and minors, but uh, we do have 30 um, within the, our um, physical education major. We do have um, a couple of different concentrations within there, as well as psychology. Avery University, we are a division three team. We have 16, um, 16 sport teams. We can have competitive, da competitive dance and cheer, varsity esports, varsity esports and competitive IDA and IHSA equestrian teams. So how to apply. Um, you can apply right on our website. Um, it is a free application, no fee, no essay. Um, you can send in your transcript straight to us. Um, as of right now, we are admitting students without um, test scores due to right now isn't normal. So um, definitely, you know, send us your transcripts and we'll um, see what we're looking at. Um, our minimum GPA is, is approximately a 2.5, um, but I would I would say that the approximate GPA for our incoming class last year was about a 3.0. Financial aid, so we do um, give out merit-based scholarships. They do range from 3,000 to uh, 18,000 a year. We do give Aver assistance for Virginia residential students. We give VTAG, which is the Virginia Tuition Assistance Grant. And the FAFSA, it's the free application for federal student aid. Um, sometimes it can be a hassle, but it's really not that difficult. Um, you just, you know, got to put your, you know, um, shoes on and um, do the FAFSA. But um, definitely, if you have any questions, then we can walk you through it. Visiting Averitt. So um, we do have... Um, some visiting dates coming up. Um, actually, this Friday, um, we do have a Cougar preview day at three o'clock, and then we have one later in the month on October the 21st, um, as well as we have a Q&A with Dr. Franks um, coming up November the 18th. And if you want to visit campus, you can. And follow us on social media. And here's my information. Awesome. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Um, next up, we have UNC Asheville. Thank you so much. Um, thank you guys for spending part of your Wednesday evening with us. My name is Sarah Moore, and I am an admission counselor at UNC Asheville. We are the liberal arts and sciences institution for the UNC system, uh, which means a lot of different things, but we like to say that one of the best of those is that we're able to offer students a private school education for a public school price. Um, and our focus is on interdisciplinary engagement. So we work on making sure that our students are able to think critically, collaboratively, and creatively within and between disciplines, because in an increasingly interconnected world, nothing happens in a bubble. And we think that you will be the, a better biologist if you can have an informed conversation with a sociologist. So that is our goal at UNC Asheville. A lot of the way that we are able to accomplish that is with our small class sizes. Uh, our student body is about 3,600 students, and those are all undergraduates. Uh, so we are an exclusively undergraduate institution. Our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one, and our average class size is about 20. So we don't have any lecture style classes. We don't have a back of the class at UNC Asheville. Um, and all of our courses are faculty taught. So we don't have teacher assistants. Um, and then you're also not competing with master's level students or PhD candidates for access to your professors um, or opportunities to do internships or conduct research. Um, speaking of research, we also founded the National Conference on Undergraduate Research, which is something that we're really proud of. Um, we have a really robust undergraduate research program at UNCA. We have about 70% 
of our students complete original research while they're at UNCA. Um, and many times that is a part of their academic program. So we have over 30 majors. You'll see on this list a couple that I want to point out that are more unique to UNC Asheville are going to be our atmospheric science program, our two plus two partnership engineering program with NC State and our mechatronics program that is an engineering program that's also in partnership with NC State. Um, and then our music technology program. Uh, one other thing that I want to point out that you may notice is that we don't have an education major listed and that is because we focus instead on a pre-professional licensure program so that a student will graduate at the end of four years at UNC Asheville with a complete, um, completely qualified to teach in 48 states, uh, but also with a degree in their content area that they're interested in teaching just in case when they get into the classroom, they decide that they don't want to be a teacher for their entire career. Um, so it gives students a little bit more flexibility that way. Um, in terms of our student life, uh, in addition to being on a campus that sits five minutes from the heart of Asheville's vibrant downtown um, and 10 minutes from the Blue Ridge Parkway, uh, we have over uh, 80 student organizations on our campus and 16 Division I sports, um, in addition to a variety of clubs and intramurals. Um, but when students are not in class, a lot of them will take a five minute bus ride uh, to the heart of downtown where the best restaurants and art galleries and concert venues and the culture of what Asheville has to offer is just a stone's throw away from our campus. Um, students are also able to ride the city bus for free with their student ID. Um, and so even though freshmen are allowed to have cars on campus, it's not necessarily required for them to experience the best of what Asheville can offer. Um, I like to say that the city, too, because the population is about 90,000, um, as we're one of America's great small cities, it's still able to offer all of the convenience of a big city, um, but still the comfort of a small town, because we're very locally minded and community oriented. Um, and then I mentioned we are also, our physical campus sits 10 minutes from the Blue Ridge Parkway, where hiking, biking, camping trips are led just about every weekend or students can take opportunities to rent equipment and go either by themselves or with a group of friends. Um, and so we do a lot at UNC Asheville to make sure that our students are able to appreciate the best of um, what exists around us, both in terms of the natural resources um, and the cultural resources that we have available to us. Uh, our application is open, of course. We accept common application and um, also a College Foundation of North Carolina application um, that students can choose to apply with. Our deadlines, uh, we are an early decision school, so if you're able to do your research and visit campus and you decide that UNC Asheville is where you want to be, you can apply early decision. Those deadlines are going to be November 1st for a December 15th notification and then January 15th for February 1st notification. We also, of course, have a regular decision application. That deadline is February 1st, and those notifications will be released around February 15th for students whose applications are complete. Um, in terms of what's required, we will need your application and your application fee or an application fee waiver. Uh, the essay that's part of the application, we don't require a supplemental essay, but we do allow students to submit supplemental materials if they wish. Um, and then we only require one recommendation or from a teacher or counselor, uh, but if you would like to submit more, multiple schools do require several. Um, so you can submit supplemental recommendations as well. And then we'll need your official high school transcripts. Uh, all UNC system schools are test optional for this year. Um, our averages for last year were about a 26 on the ACT and a 1200 on the SAT. If you were able to take the test and you're proud of your score, we will celebrate your accomplishment in that arena with you. Uh, but it is not required and we will not give students additional consideration for merit scholarships based on whether or not they were able to sit for the SAT or the ACT. And then in terms of finding out more, uh, you're welcome to connect with us. You can email me directly. I work with students throughout the state of Virginia, um, so I'm happy to be a resource for you as you work through a particularly tricky application season. Uh, you can also schedule an in-person or virtual tour at unca.edu slash visit. Um, I am also on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and we have a new podcast this year as well. So if you want to connect with us uh, without needing a Zoom link and a password, uh, you are welcome to connect with us that way as well. Thank you guys so much. We look forward to seeing you on campus soon. Thanks, Sarah. Up next, we have Salem College. Hello. My name is Ray Celeste Tanner, and I'm an admissions counselor at Salem College. Uh, we were founded in 1772, um, and we are a women's college. So we are actually the oldest um, women's college in the country, founded before the Declaration of Independence was signed. Uh, a little bit um, first, uh, 
I'm glad UNCA was here to talk about what a liberal arts college um, education brings. Uh, but just to reiterate some of that, um, a liberal arts education is focused on undergraduate education, which means you won't be fighting for um, for research capabilities with uh, PhD students or with master students, um, but you'll also get a really great cross disciplinary um, approach to your education. So you won't be taking classes just in math. If you're a math major, you'll be taking classes in a variety of different subject areas, uh, which will really help make sure you have a holistic approach to education. Um, which leads to good critical thinking skills and um, well rounded scholars that employers really value. The other thing is you don't have to uh, decide on a major right away. So you might be wondering why a women's college? Uh, well, first of all, graduates of women's colleges earn on average $8,000 more per year than um, graduates of co-ed colleges. Uh, and this is comparing doctors to doctors, teachers to teachers. And students um, who study at women's colleges are more likely to enter male dominated fields like math, science, pre-med um, than women in co-ed colleges. Some quick facts about Salem specifically. Uh, we're ranked the third um, liberal arts college in North Carolina and 24th in the country. Um, and we're ranked 10th in social mobility. So, from 1772, we have all uh, been about making sure that um, women have quality to uh, have access to a quality education. And we really believe in um, serving those who have traditionally not been able to receive an education. We have a student body of under 1,000 students. Um, we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio with an average class size of 12 to 15 students. So really small class sizes at Salem. 42% uh, of our students identify as students of color. Um, and we have some really strong um, uh, placements into law school as well as medical school. So we have a 90% acceptance rate of um, our recent students into medical school and health related graduate programs and 100% into law school. We have a multitude of majors that you can choose from. So even if you decide uh, not to major, uh, you know, to major in one thing, you'll still take classes in, in other subject areas, but you'll also have opportunities to learn outside of the classroom. So 100% of our students actually complete internships. So although you'll, you know, get all of this broad knowledge, you'll also have um, really helpful internship uh, experience for when you graduate. Uh, as well as service learning courses. Um, and you're also able to cross register at Wake Forest University for no extra tuition cost. So if we don't have the class here at Salem, you can take it at Wake. Uh, we participate in Division Three athletics and uh, we have a multitude of uh, organizations and clubs that you can join. I, my colleague Lauren will now talk about the application process. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm here to touch on the application uh, requirements. And um, it's a very straightforward process with us. Um, we just need a submitted application, as well as your official high school transcript, a teacher recommendation and a writing uh, sample. Uh, we are also test optional. Um, if you want to go ahead and submit your test scores, you're more than welcome to. Um, they're certainly not going to count against you and uh, we are free um, on the Common App. So scholarships and um, financial aid. Um, we offer merit-based scholarships. Uh, we have our first year merit scholarship and that is a uh, half tuition scholarship each year if your GPA is 3.25 uh, or above and you are a first year student and that does include early college. Uh, if you're coming to us as a transfer student and your GPA is 3.25 or above, uh, you are automatically eligible for a $12,000 scholarship per year. Uh, we have a couple of other um, unique scholarships as well. We have our Davis Art Scholarship, um, which is a full tuition for students who are studying art, art history, or design. Uh, there is a separate application um, for the Davis Art Scholarship. And then we also offer um, music scholarships as well, and we do require auditions for those. And for the art and music scholarships, um, you need to apply by uh, December 1st. 
And we also offer um, need-based scholarships. So all you would need to do for the need-based scholarships uh, is just make sure to um, fill out your FAFSA. And um, we're very eager to connect with you. So you can email us at admissions at salem.edu. Uh, you can also scan the QR code that you see here to um, register for our virtual tour, or you can call our admissions office at the number listed on, our, on your screen. So um, thank you very much. Thanks you all. Up next and last but not least, we have Full Sail University. Right. Excellent. Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Fry. I'm a regional outreach representative with Full Sail University. Uh, we are a school right outside of Orlando in Winter Park, Florida. We focus on teaching things involved with entertainment, media, arts, and technology. So we have over 40 different degrees, uh, and they're going to be things like filmmaking, video game design, music production, IT, computer animation, everything like that. That's the kind of stuff that we focus on. And there's a lot of uh, ability on our campus and with our students to work across degree programs because movies need sound and we have film students and audio students who are all gonna be working around the same time and can potentially work across these degree programs. So we'll go through a few different uh, high points with this. One of the most unique and defining features of the university is that our education is very fast paced and it is heavily focused on what you are doing. So students do need to figure out their major before they start with us because our degree programs are gonna be very quick. Our students are on campus, uh, for our on-campus students, anywhere from 32 to 40 hours per week throughout the year. So they are earning all 120 credit hours of their bachelor's degree in less than two years for our campus students. Um, that because of that also they're able to start it almost every time they're in class enough that each one of our classes only lasts a month. So we have 12 start dates throughout the year when students can begin their classes and when they can kick off their education with us. All of our degrees are going to be project based. They're all going to be taught by people who worked in the industry. Every one of our classes, whoever the teacher is, whatever the class is, that teacher worked in the world uh, within that industry. They did that for at least three years before they could teach with us. Um, and part of what we do as well is we make sure that all of our students are ready for what they are going to experience in the real world. And part of this is working with the technology that they would be using in the real world. Uh, to do this, we have something called our project launch box. The project launch box is the hardware and software that you would need as somebody in the industry. And this is what our students are getting for us uh, through us. This is essentially like a textbook. It's theirs to keep forever, uh, and it's going to be with something that they can use the whole time throughout the degree program. So now, rather than having to be on campus to do their work, they can take their work, they can take their projects and their multimedia with them wherever they go. And then when they go out into the, uh, these industries, they have the same hardware and software that they would need to work in these fields. Um, because these are very technology-based fields, even things like creative writing have a lot of different technology and software with them. We want to make sure that our graduates are ready. Now, in terms of student life, you would probably think with a schedule like this, there's not a whole lot of student life on campus, but there is a ton going on all the time. Uh, we have a lot of events on campus. We also have a ton of different clubs. Um, these are just some of the clubs that we have on campus uh, that students can join. And we have a lot of opportunities throughout the year for students to join up with these clubs or uh, work with uh, these clubs on creating events and doing things around the campus. One of our clubs uh, that has become a little bit more than a club was our eSports team, the Armada. Uh, they are now our only collegiate uh, sports team uh, and they play in the Fortress on our campus, which is the largest collegiate eSports stadium in the United States. Um, so we have a big focus on eSports uh, with our university and uh, we love when we can pack the stadium uh, and enjoy watching some eSports that our students are participating in. Uh, for career development, we have a team specifically on campus that is there to help our students with employable soft skills, as well as helping our graduates find work after they get out of school. We have graduates working all throughout these different industries. Uh, a couple companies are going to come up. These are all companies that we have grads working for. Um, and this is just kind of a little bit of it. We have grads working at all of, uh, all of these and a ton more that you don't see here. Um, our Career development team is a lifelong resource. There's over 60 career advisors and at any point after a student graduates, 
they can get in touch with career development to get more information about potential opportunities that are out there. Plus, our degrees are lifelong as well. Our graduates can come back and they can audit any of the classes from the current version of the degree that they earned for no additional cost for the rest of their life. Uh, so we can constantly be a resource when technology changes, which I'm sure you're aware technology is constantly changing. They can come back, they can learn the new technology that we're teaching on campus and they can bring that with them as long as it's part of the, the updated version of the degree that they earned. So we have grads working on for a lot of different companies. We've also got grads who have been recognized uh, by a few different institutions. At the most recent Academy Awards, over 140 of our graduates are credited on uh, 24 Oscar-nominated projects across 20 categories. Uh, at the most recent Grammys, 50 of our graduates credited on 62 uh, Grammy-nominated artist releases across 39 categories. You see the numbers here. 223 graduates credited at the Game Awards last year on Game Award-nominated games. Our grads are out there working on things that not only can get this audience appeal, but also get some of the critical recognition as well. For the admissions process, we are not looking at a lot of the traditional things that you would see with uh, college entry. We are not specifically focused on GPA, SAT, ACT. Um, there may be scholarship opportunities that are available for that. Um, so feel free to still send us those scores, try to work to get those scholarships um, that we do keep on our website. But otherwise, the best way to get info is either scan that QR code we have on the screen, or if you go to that URL, fsoutreach.com slash fs5, that's where you can request some info or feel free to follow us on anything. Cool, thank you panelists. And also thank you students for joining us. Um, when you close the window, there will be a quick four question survey we appreciate any feedback you might have. Um, please sign up for more sessions. Check out the schedule at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And also a recording of this session will be available in about a week on the same site that you registered for. So again, thank you for joining us and panelists and students have a good rest of your night.